Hello everybody. Welcome to a special program that the Hardwick Gazette and HCTV are jointly doing to bring you interviews of the candidates in Vermont's primary election. The primary this year is August 13th. We'll be interviewing all the candidates in four Senate districts and five House districts that the 11 towns of the Hardwick Gazette are uh, represented by. So, You'll be able to watch these at hctv.us or read them at hardwickgazette.org and each uh, place will be linked to the other. So we'll bring you now interviews of your local candidates. Thanks for watching. I, um, I spent a lifetime as an environmental lawyer, and then I, was, I ran the environmental program at the law school, at Vermont Law School, and then became its dean, and then I retired, and then I failed at retirement. I uh, ended up on the select board for a few years, and I just really enjoyed, I enjoyed the variety, the fun, and the challenge of doing something good for my community. So when Janet Ansel, my predecessor, retired from the state legislature, I decided, well, first Janet and I started looking around for someone young, a young woman, preferably, to take her position, and we couldn't find anyone who could afford to do it, which, by the way, is one of the problems. The legislature is part-time, there's no health insurance, and there's no, and the pay is almost non-existent. So the only people who can afford to do it are some people who have alternative sources of income. Anyway, so I'm on the Appropriations Committee and I really enjoy working for the people of my district. I think it's pretty clear that while we have a good progressive tax system in Vermont, we cannot tax the poor, we cannot tax the middle class any more than they're paying now. We can tax the wealthy a little more than we have. They've received three major tax cuts from the federal government in the last 20 years, and I think we could increase their taxes somewhat and use that money to help pay for better schools, more public safety, and housing. The solution to the school tax issue is complicated, and anyone who says different doesn't know what they're talking about. We've been told by the teachers, by the principals, the administrators, and the parents not to act quickly. That's the one thing they don't want us to do at the legislature is go off half-cocked. So it is my hope that we can get together with the governor in the next session after the, we appointed a sort of a blue ribbon commission to go all around the state and talk to people and come back to us with specific proposals at the end of this year so we can act in the next session and again in the, at the end of next year. And I'm optimistic we can do something. There's no easy answer. It's lo there's a lot of local control, people like it, but it's expensive. This, in my mind, is the single most important issue we face, is affordable housing. And we're not alone. Housing is unaffordable to the middle class in many places in the United States. It didn't used to be in Vermont, it is now. And the answer of what it's gonna take is money. One of the problems we have is that some people say, oh, it's just because it's too hard, the regulation is burdensome, it's too hard, Act 250, et cetera, and I'm sorry, that's, that does, that's just not the case. The math doesn't add up. Maybe 5% of the cost of a house is due to regulation, but the other 95% is just the cost of the land and the house. Right now, it costs about a half a million dollars to produce a new house in Vermont, whether it's a house or an apartment. And the average Vermonter, a nurse, for example, or a contractor or a carpenter, they can't afford to pay half a million dollars. So it has to be less which means the state, using state money, has to buy down 
the cost of housing. There's no other way. That's going to be a problem, and to raise that money, the legislature that we proposed in the legislature that we increased by 3% incomes over half a million dollars, people with incomes over half a million, that didn't go anywhere in the Senate or with the governor, but something like that's going to have to happen. Without money, we will not solve the housing crisis. This is an area where lack of cooperation between the governor on the one hand and the legislature has really been damaging to the people who are most in need, the homeless. Everybody agrees on one thing. Motels are not an ideal solution. They're very expensive. Every year we just spend tens of millions of dollars on motels. We've been asking the governor for a plan to deal with this problem for six years and nothing has happened. I think so a plan was produced during the legislative session and it would be a combination uh, because it's a complicated population. Some people need, some people need special help. Some people are they're, they're mentally ill. Some people just are families with a lot of kids. Some are old people. Some are people who aren't healthy. Each of these populations needs special help, and each of those takes money. It would take about $100 million a year to really make a major dent in the homeless problem. And the absent raising that money through taxes, I think, on the wealthy, we're every year going to be facing the same crisis. It's going to be getting cold, and we're going to be forced to use motels. The there's no question that the kind of flooding that we've seen, for example, in my district in Plainfield, which has been terrible, much worse than reported, really. Um, that's going to have the saddest thing about that, beyond the 15 homes or so that were destroyed and another 20 badly damaged, beyond the I th more than six, maybe eight uh, bridges that went, beyond all of that, is that it's just going to happen again and it's gonna happen again soon. In the last flood and the big flood a year ago, I hate to say it, but really the towns were on their own. The state paid more, most attention to state infrastructure and left the towns on their own. The towns can't do it. They don't have the resources. They don't have the money. Places, Places like Plainfield are essentially broke. They spent th over $300,000 last year, and they still haven't seen the money from FEMA. In my mind, the only solution is state involvement, much more than it has been, and federal involvement. We have to work with our federal, with our, with our friends in the Senate and in the House, and get more federal money in a more reliable way into Vermont. This is a bigger problem than we can handle on our own. As to the gas tax, yes, it's going down. It should go down and disappear with electric cars. But we're going to have to find an alternative approach. And I think it's going to be an approach which is per mile. You're going to have to register how many miles you drove, and then your taxes will be based on a mileage fee. Well, first of all, I support the the amendment that would, that would guarantee equality of treatment for all Vermonters on every basis, including, of course, a right to access abortion. I don't really think this issue is about whether abortion is a good idea or not, because, of course, nobody is suggesting that people who don't want to have an abortion should be forced to have an abortion. No one is dictating what individuals do. The question here is whether we should use the power of the state, the power of government, to impose one view on this divisive issue on the whole population. And I do not agree with that. I do not think we should be using the power of the state to tell people what they do with their bodies. I think another area, there are two other areas of concern and the governor has mentioned them. Unfortunately, not much is being done about it. One is public safety. 
our judicial system is kind of falling apart right now in Vermont. From the time that a, someone who commits a crime is arrested to the time they go to trial is like three years. And during those three years, we can't put them in jail unless they committed a dangerous and violent crime. If it was just breaking into a car or something where they were, they're on drugs and they're looking for oh, some cash so they broke into somebody's house and no one was home, we can't just throw them in jail and keep them there. The problem is, what do we do about the delay? And I think that there's only one answer. More prosecutors, more judges, more defense attorneys, and more victims advocates. And again, that's gonna cost money. So it all comes down to one thing. How can we increase our budget to address problems like public safety, housing, schools, healthcare? How can we do that without burdening the middle class and the poor? And I think there are solutions. I'm on the Appropriations Committee. I think there are solutions, but I think we're going to have to get the governor to go along with them, and I don't know if he will.